of Luke verse 28 while you are sitting down be open to the Bible at the same time Luke chapter 19 one more time let's celebrate the choir clap for them wow that is great 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 amen we are we are we are the most privileged to have such wonderful drummer wonderful keyboardists wonderful singers clap for them <laughs> hallelujah I know I know what it costs to have this what did I say? I know, I know what it costs to have such people. We, we even guy you. And they will only come and play and go. They are no more concerned about the work. But here we have people who don't just play and sing, but they are lovers of God. One more time, clap for them. Great. Hallelujah. And your blessing will come. Amen. Hallelujah. God is making me great, and you will share my greatness. Amen. Oh, then it is too cold. Amen. Chapter 19, I was blessed by the administration today. Chapter 19 of Luke 28, are you there? I will take 28, you take verse 29. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up, up to Jerusalem. Verse 29. Verse 30, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a court tied, whereupon yet never whereupon yet never man sat, loose him and bring him thither. Verse 31. And they that went, and they that were sent, went their way and found even as he has said unto them. Verse 33. Verse 34. And they said, the Lord had need of him. Verse 35.
36. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the wind. 37. Saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Verse 39. What verse now? And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if they should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Verse 41. And when he was come near, and beheld city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from the eyes. Verse 43 For the day shall come upon thee that the enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compact thee round and keep thee in on every side. Verse 44. And shall lay thee even with the ground and the children within thee and they shall not live in thee. One stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Verse 45. And he went unto the temple and began to cast out them that sowed there and them that bought. Verse 46. Saying unto them, it is written, my house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Verse 47, and he talked daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. Verse 48, the last one, and they could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to him. Oh my God, there is power and attention. Hallelujah. They wanted to kill Jesus, but they realized that the people were very attentive to him. It takes you how powerful is attention. How powerful is his reception. Hallelujah. I will deal with that next time. I'll be doing the teaching from these verses we've read. And uh, in two segments. And I, I love the verse 42 that when he was entering Jerusalem, the Bible says he went to Marat, that when he saw Jerusalem from afar, what happened? He wept. Now, this is the second place that Jesus wept. The first place is the study of Lazarus, Martha, and the rest. The shortest verse of the scripture. And secondly, here, Jesus wept. I will come to that. But before that, let's begin the, the, the teaching. In, in this verse we read, Jesus was to enter Jerusalem. Don't forget, everything about Christ was orchestrated by God. Jesus didn't come to the earth for coming, so he came to fulfill a purpose. So events are orchestrated to ensure that that purpose is being fulfilled. So he was entering Jerusalem. At this time, it was one week to Easter. What did I say? That's what they call Palm Sunday. And one week to when he, he was killed, he entered Jerusalem. And why did he enter Jerusalem? Because he, he was to die in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was the place of his death. So the Bible says, while they were going with the disciples, he told two of them, go ahead of me to a village. You will see a donkey tie. Untie it. Whoever asks you, why are you untying it? Say to him, the master needs it. The master. So let's begin. This is very critical. When God needs you to fulfill a prophetic agenda or to carry out a divine purpose, you'll be set free from whatever is holding you. Very important. What did I say? When God needs you to fulfill a major or a prophetic agenda, he will ensure you are set free from whatever is holding or tying you down. Don't forget that this donkey fits into God's prophetic agenda. Should I show you? Chapter 9, verse 9 of Zechariah. The story is the quickly. Let's read it quickly, 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 very fast, very fast. Chapter 9, verse 9 of Zechariah. Zechariah 9, are you there? Are you there? Please, are you there? Okay, let me wait for you. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. That's the story of the donkey. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Are you there? 
Okay, let's take it. I want to go. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, that king comment unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an axe and upon a cord, the fall of an axe. Now look up now. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 was actually a prophetic word about Christ riding on a donkey. Are you following me now? Now, before the event happened, it was prophesied by God in the Old Testament. Don't forget, the Old Testament is the New Testament conceived, and, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And I've said it time with that number, that Christ is the only message of the Bible, whether old or new. Hello? So it was prophesied that a time is going to come, Zachariah, that your king will sit on a donkey. So that was a prophecy of Jesus sitting on a donkey. So when it was time for this scripture to come to pass, the donkey was tied somewhere. And I said that when God needs you to fulfill a prophetic agenda, he will ensure you are let loose, set free from whatever is holding you down. So when it was time for, for the prophetic agenda of this donkey to be fulfilled, there was need for him to be loose. There was need for him to be untied. There was need for him to be set free. So he said, go. The prophetic agenda of that donkey prophesied in Zachariah is about to be fulfilled. Can I pray for you? Because you are connected to God's prophetic agenda. Whatever is holding you bound, whatever is tying you down, in the name of Jesus, you are set free today. Yeah. Oh, diamond is too cold. Yeah. Even Satan can't hold you anymore. Because you are about to fulfill a word, a prophetic agenda. Quickly, read Psalm chapter 105, verse 17. Quickly, Psalm 105. I just pray you should understand this preaching or teaching today. Psalm 105, verse 17. Zechariah 9, verse 9. Psalm 105, verse. What did I say the first lesson? When God needs you to what? Fulfill a prophetic agenda. What happened? It will ensure that you are set free or loose from whatever is holding you. Psalm 105, are you there? Verse 17. If you are there, say I'm there. Okay, he said, and then he sent Joseph as a slave to Egypt to save his people from starvation. Verse 18. There in prison, they hurt his feet with fetters and placed his neck in an iron collar. Verse 19. Until God's time finally came, how God tested his patience. 20. Then the king sent for him and set him free. The king sent for him and set him free. Why? Because Joseph was about to fulfill a prophetic agenda. Are you seeing it now? Where was he before he was set free? He was in chain. He was in prison. They put iron collar around his leg. They put chains in his leg. He cannot move anywhere. But when the time showed up, the Bible says, when God's time finally came, what happened? The king sent for him and set him free. Why was he set free? Because the hour has come to fulfill a prophetic agenda. You are set free. Amen. You are set free. Amen. You are set free from every satanic attack. Amen. You are set free from financial imprisonment. Amen. Oh, that amen is too cold. Amen. You are set free from whatever demonic challenge. Amen. When it is time, when God, when look up, what did I say? Come on, say, when God amen. needs me to fulfill a prophetic agenda or to carry out a divine purpose, He will ensure. That I'm set free from whatever that is holding me. So I declare today, somebody is set free today. Yeah. You are set free from whatever that is holding you down. Why? Because God needs me to fulfill. Come on, say God needs me. God needs me. Uh, come on, say God needs me. God needs me. That God needs you, Satan is in trouble. Come on, say God needs me. God needs me, God needs me. God needs me. in the church. In the nation, in my community, is that one understood? 
Is that why I understood now? You have to pray me. Then, number two, let's see. Look up now. The Bible says, when they got to untie the donkey, and Jesus said, if you are doing that, they will ask, they will ask you, what will you say? Who will ask him? The owners of the donkey will ask. Then tell them, the master is in need of them. And when they called them, they found out exactly, the Bible says, they found out exactly as Jesus said. Lesson number two, when you act on God's word, it will become real in your life. When you act on God's word, you will certainly see the outcome. When, you, when they acted on what Jesus said, they saw the outcome, am I right? So when you act on God's word, when you pray God's word, you will certainly or definitely see the outcome. And the outcome is positive. Did they act, did they act on what Jesus said? So lesson number two is that when you act on God's word, anytime you will certainly see the outcome. Come and say, I will act. Come and say, I will act on God's word. Then let's see number two. This is very critical, but look up now. Look up. He said, when you are on training and they ask you, what do you do? Tell them the master. And the Bible says, why do we do it? The owners came. Why are you untying this donkey? They said the master is in need. And the people, the owners, let them go with the donkey. This is very powerful. When it is time for you to fulfill agenda for your life, God will make people to cooperate with you. Amen. Oh, you think it? You think that this is the purpose, sir? This is very mind blowing. God will make people to cooperate with you. People that were fighting you, all of a sudden will begin to cooperate. <laughs> When, 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 when it is time for a prophetic agenda to come to pass, things and persons will complete. Oh, this is very powerful. Please, I, 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 I pray, I, I pray for this message this morning. I've been praying all this while. Uh, this is a season, and we are going to see it after today. When they will sing it today, we saw where the sun was done. I because the praise and the worship took a new dimension. I said, this is a prophecy for it. As he was singing Hosanna, <laughs> I said, it means that God is answering this message today. Yeah. I think it again, the owners cooperated. Those who own it didn't argue. When it is time for you to fulfill a prophetic agenda, things and people cooperate with you. Therefore, I pray for you. Whatever has been fighting you before now, whatever is rejecting you, after today, they shall cooperate. Yeah. Whether, 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 whether living or not living, they shall begin to cooperate with your destiny. Yeah. Oh, that amen is too cold. Yeah. Even those that own it didn't argue. <laughs> Why? Because it was a season for the fulfillment of that prophetic agenda. Can I pray for somebody? I speak over you. Things will cooperate with you. People will cooperate with you. Things that we are running from you before now, they shall begin to run to you. Why will they cooperate? Because it's my time to fulfill a prophetic. Oh my God, I feel a like praying. I feel a like praying. Oh my God. I know I, know I can't adjust this teaching today. No, I want us to anyway we stop, we'll continue next Is that okay? That we can really get because God, we're in a new season, sir. We're in a new season. This will cooperate. Owners didn't say anything. It's divine. Yeah. In other words, any request from today shall be granted. Yeah. In other words, anywhere you put application. That company will complete. Amen. <laughs> you didn't get me. And anywhere you apply, anywhere you apply for something before now, and you have been rejected because it is time they shall complete. We are going to pray this prayer today, and we shall see these things happening in our life this day. Come on, say, Congratulations. 
whatever that's been rejecting you now is completing. It's completing. So lesson number three is that when it is time for you to fulfill a divine agenda, God will ensure that things and persons complete. Oh, this is very powerful. Am I communicating now? That one is too is too slow. Say big amen. amen. Was Joseph released from the prison? Yes, sir. Okay, read verse, read verse 31 and verse 35 of, of Luke. Look, oh my God. Not going to make myself available today for the right words. Luke 19, verse 31 and 35. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, if any man asks you, why do you lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord had what? Okay, go to verse 35. Verse 34. And they said, the Lord had need of him. Verse 35. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garment upon the coat, and they set Jesus their own. Verse 36. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Now look up. People cooperated. They brought their clothes on their own. As Jesus sat on the donkey, the Bible says people spread on their own. They spread. He didn't break them. He didn't get this. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garment. They cast what the value of the donkey. And, and, and as they went, they spread their clothes in the way. People were cooperating. These were things that would have been difficult to be achieved. But because it was, it was time for a prophetic agenda to be fulfilled, people were cooperating with Jesus on the donkey. It shall happen to you. Amen. They will spread their garments for you. Amen. Garments can be what people value. They will spread it to you. Amen. Oh, that amen is too cold. Amen. The church, you know what? The honor was not to the donkey. The honor was to Jesus. But because the donkey carried the master, he enjoyed the honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that is why in this season, let's ensure that we carry Jesus in our spirit. We carry Christ in our mind. We carry Christ in our words. Things we cooperate. Oh my God. Am I really communicating now? The, the next lesson, which is very important, whatever, the Bible says that this thing, the, the donkey has been kept for a while without any man riding on the donkey, am I right? In other words, nobody used the donkey. Yet, what was not used by someone, he gave it to Christ. What was not used. So, whatever people have, have kept all these years that are valuable, that they have no use, they will make it available to you. Yeah. Even cars. Yeah. Whatever it is to go. Yeah. Even house. Yeah. What has been kept without being used? Because it was time for a prophetic agenda to be fulfilled. People gave it out. So I speak over you in this season, you will enjoy things that men have kept in their houses. Yeah. That are valuable, but is they are very significant to you. Yeah. Things that men have kept that they have not used, but because they play a significant role to you, they shall cooperate yeah. and they shall make it available to you. Yeah. Now, after this service, we will hear testimonies of heaven. Yeah. Oh, bros, I have this car that I'm come and take the car. Bros, come and take this house. Oh, no, that is too cool. Yeah. That amen is too cool. Yeah. Come on, say, I believe, I believe it. Because there's something about God's prophetic agenda is very powerful. It's very powerful. And when it's about to manifest, God will ensure that things come into place and success will be inevitable. I would like us to go to the next dimension while we round up. Number one, I said to you, what number one lesson number one is that when God needs you to fulfill a prophetic agenda, what happened? He will ensure 
that you are set free from whatever that is holding you. As I'm speaking right now, somebody is free. Amen. Somebody is like Joseph who has been kept in the prison year in, year out. Congratulations. The Bible says the king sent for him and set him free. That is an order that cannot be rejected. The king sent for him. I pray for you. You shall be sent for and you shall be set free. Amen. Oh, that amen is too cold. Amen. That amen is too cold. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And what's lesson number two? That when it is time for you to fulfill a prophetic agenda, things and persons cooperate. I like this one. Things will cooperate. Things will cooperate for you. Amen. Then what's number three lesson? Grab job number two. That when they acted on what Jesus said, they saw exactly what he said. Am I right? I said, when you act on God's word, you suddenly see the outcome that is positive. Oh, praise God. Glory to God. Okay, let's move to the next lesson, to the section B of the teaching. I'm done with section A. Come on, say, never. You are free from whatever that is holding you down. And, and okay, there is at times, at times, if if you are in a particular place for a long period of time, God is just keeping you for a time like this. What did I say? God is just keeping you for a time. There is a time. There is a time for you to leave. Amen. And you have been on time. Amen. Let's go to verse forty-one. Is the lesson clear now? Is the lesson clear? Yes, now verse 41. And when he was come here, he beheld the city and what? And wept over it. Everybody verse 42 now. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that the enemy shall cast a stretch about thee and compact thee round and keep thee on every side. Verse 44. And they shall lay this even with the ground, and, and the children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of your visitation. Look up now. Please look up. This is very critical. I said to you, this is the second place that Jesus went. Am I right? Why did Jesus weep? He wept not because somebody died. He wept because what? I, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I will share that. While he was approaching Jerusalem, he began to weep. Why was he weeping? It's in verse 42. If you had known that my coming to the end is for your salvation, then it is hidden from you. Now, Jesus wept because of spiritual ignorance. That, that the people he came for didn't even know that what they were waiting for has showed up. What did I say? What they were waiting for has what? Oh, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you. So why did Jesus weep? He wept over the city. And I said that, that people's spiritual ignorance concerning what God has provided for them in Christ made Christ to weep over them. What did I say? People's spiritual ignorance concerning what God has provided for we, where in Christ, is the reason why Jesus went. So in other words, when people are not working in the knowledge of who we are in Christ, it touches the heart of God. He went. God went. Because it was their time of what? Visitation. It was their time of what? Salvation. But they did not know. And Jesus said, I wish you would have known that this, see what he said. He said, he said if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this that day, the things which belong to your peace. In other words, I am the reason for your peace, for your salvation. That word peace is salvation. In other words, God was providing salvation for the Jews through him. But they were blind. They didn't know. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, this is very, this is very important. Then, 
Then see what Jesus said. He said, because you didn't know that the enemy will come upon you, he will destroy this thing you are seeing, and he will destroy your children. Sir, 17 AD, the Roman Empire came to Jerusalem and did exactly what Jesus said. 17 AD, when, when the Jews revolted against the Roman Empire, they came in, broke into the camp, destroyed the temple. And Jesus said, because you did not come, you did not recognize that this is time of what? Of what? Then, then see what, see what I put here. I said, your knowledge of what God has accomplished for you in Christ will always make God to rejoice. Am I right? So if Jesus wept because the people didn't know that this is their type of salvation, it simply means when we know and walk in our knowledge of Christ, it makes God to be happy. Then, look up. Why did Jesus say the enemy will come and destroy you? Why? Why? Because you did not recognize that this is your time of what? Of what? Of what? Salvation. So I said, the enemy, this is very powerful, the enemy will always take advantage of people's opposition, rejection, and ignorance of the truth to attack them. You didn't get it. What did I say? Come on, say the enemy will always take advantage of people's opposition, rejection, and ignorance of the truth to attack them. So because they oppose the truth, because they rejected the Messiah, because they were ignorant, he said the enemy will come. So he said, your ignorance is the reason why the enemy is attacking you. Your ignorance of who you are in Christ is the reason for the devil's attack upon your life. Oh, so much look at me. What did I say? That the enemy will always what? Take advantage of people's opposition, rejection. So each time people oppose the truth, they pave way for the enemy to attack. Each time people reject the, the truth, what do they do? They pave way for the enemy to attack. Each time people are ignorant of the truth, the devil will take advantage of that to attack. Hello? Come on, hello. And each time the wrong gospel is told, it pays way for the enemy to attack. Each time people are taught this, each time, each time pastors replace this as the basis for healing rather than Christ, it pays way for the enemy to attack. I think it again. Each time pastors replace things as the basis for healing and deliverance rather than on Christ. It does what? It pays way for the enemy to attack. So what it means is that your ignorance is the reason why the enemy is attacking you. Okay, hear me, sir. When the truth is revealed and you grow in the truth and you act on the truth, you are creating a defense in future when enemy attack. You didn't get me. When the truth is what? When the truth is what? And when the truth is taught, and you grow in the truth, number two, and you act on the truth, you are creating a defense in the future in case the enemy will show up to attack your head. Because for attacking, it will come. For attacking, it will come. But when it comes and see you rooted in your knowledge of Christ, it is, 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 his power is broken. For coming will come. But may the enemy not come to you when you are not growing in Christ. I don't mean coming to church, oh. eh, I mean growing in the knowledge of who you are, where? In Christ. So, how come we have people who come to church every day in Nigeria, and we, we are victims of circumstances. The reason is that there was no defense. The truth built defense around us. Christ built defense around us. So Jesus said, if you have embraced this truth, 
I'm, I'm paraphrasing. If you had embraced this truth, and when the enemy show up in the future, there will be a defense, and the enemy will not prevail over you. So the truth you know, the truth you walk upon, which is Christ, will create a defense whenever the enemy shows up, and you will have victory over him. The Bible says, a man built on a stone, and a man built on a what? On a sand. And a storm, storm will certainly come. What did I say? Come on, say storm. storm. What did I say? Storm. storm will certainly come. What's that? It, what about that? Yeah? No, 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 after the service. Thank you, sir. Clap for him. Clap for the young man. Doing a great work. God bless you. So that you can get, you can get, you can get this, this teaching. Hallelujah. But am I going to come get it now? Oh, am I making sense now? Now, why did Jesus say the enemy will come and attack you? He said, because you didn't know that, hear me, sir, this madness, the Jews were waiting for the Messiah to come. And they didn't even know he has come. They were still waiting for him to come. Meanwhile, he's before them. That was why he wept. And till today, there is this spiritual blindness on every Jew. I was listening to a Jewish man. I don't know what the man is trying to do. The man was preaching. I was listening to him. He said, there is no way Jesus was mentioned in the Bible. Very, very. He said, he said, he said, there is no way. He said, there is no way. He was simply saying to people, there is nothing like New Testament. He said, there is, he said, it's a lie from the Christians for them to say that, that, that I can show you no way. Jesus. So even till today, the Jews are still angry. Spiritual blindness. And that is why they are suffering. Attack is to come until when he comes back again. But the message is this that when you know the truth and you work on it, it will create a defense tomorrow in case the enemy will come to attack your head. Hear me? For attacking, he will come. But may he not come when you are not growing in Christ. May he not come when you are, you are actually dedicated without the revelation. Because dedication is not a, a guarantee of revelation. Hello? So we are people who go to church, but they, they know nothing about who they are in Christ. So the enemy will always take advantage of people's number one, opposition, number two, Rejection, number three, ignorance of the truth to attack. But when the truth is revealed, like I'm teaching you here now, hear me, sir. Hear me. When you walk in these things, I'm teaching you. Caught it be anywhere. The devil can never prevail over you. It is not a prayer point, it's a reality. Hello? Because the devil reigns where darkness is. The devil's strength is people is people's ignorance. There is an environment the devil is forever paralyzed, which is Christ. Which is Christ. Come on, say Christ. It's the truth. And when I walk in it, when I grow in it, I will be a defense around my life, around my head, and nothing shall happen. Oh, is somebody blessed at all? Hear me? Devil's attack are real. But there is a better way to overcome them. And that better way is Christ. Any teaching that people give to you about deliverance that is not Christ-centered, so it's forceful, and you'll be exposed to attack. Are you not asking yourself, with all these prayers we are praying, people who finish prayer, the more they pray, the more demons attack. You know what? The people were not taught who they are in Christ. In Him you are holy. In Him you are pure. In him you have been. Your victory over Satan is because you have faith in Christ. Oh, am I teaching you now? But guess what now? Certain things have been replaced. Certain things have been used to replace Christ in our preaching. There are other things for deliverance. Hear me, sir. Fasting does not deliver, quote me anywhere, fasting does not deliver any man. What did I say? It is, it is ignorance to fast to be delivered. Because, because people were fasting before Jesus came. And the fasting couldn't rescue them from the grip of Satan. 
The only thing that can rescue you from Satan's grip is what Christ has done on the cross. Oh my God. I wish the church can teach this truth to the people that without Christ dying on the cross, without Christ resurrecting, you cannot have victory over Satan. He said he triumphed over them by the cross. That, that through his death, he destroyed him that has the power of death. Oh, glory to God. So when you go to God in prayer, and you pray with this revelation of who you are in Christ, Satan will be forever stranded. Oh my God. Am I really communicating? Praise God. So something that happened, I was, I was going to, to Bwari on morning, and my car stopped at Ushapa. I didn't know that the fan bed caught, and I was driving the car for a long time. I know that can be very deadly. Fan bed caught, and you were, I was driving for a, not just caught, it caught on the part that the bed was lying on. So I knew something was wrong with it. I knew something was wrong because I was passing this So I saw, I checked, I checked. I didn't see anything. I was driving again. I came down. I said, something is wrong. So when I opened the bonnet, I tried to open the, where the water is report. Pow! There was an explosion. Then I called a neighbor mechanic. Uh, to came, and I gave him money, he gave me to come. He bought the fan bed and, and fixed it. When I drove to uh, Ushafa, the car stopped. And I didn't know that it was the casket that got burnt. I know the casket of that car is very cheap. It's very cheap. It's just about 2,000 dollars. But you must, you must lose the engine. It's very cheap. 2,000 dollars. But and the, in, the work of removing the engine is even where the money is. Not even the, the, not even the gas is 2,000 dollars. But you will lose the engine every stage by stage before you put it. So for three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was going to, I was going to uh, Ushapa, me, Dusi. I had to tow it from Ushapa to Dusi, to a, a friend of mine who is a pastor, to his, his place there. So he, he got me a mechanic to fix it. And they couldn't, they couldn't set the timing of the car. And once the timing is not set, the car will not move. And the man did not know that the timing was not set. So ignorance is terrible, sir. He didn't know that the timing was not set. So for two days, they were trying to start the car. The car could not start. If they remove the fuel pump, the car will start. If they put it back, the car will not start. Trust. And it was the timing that was not set. So when they removed the fuel pump once at a time, it touched the exhaust. The car caught fire. Pow! Boy, it was an explosion. Ah. Boy, the man, the man deep in rice. Come on. You, 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 you. And guess what? I was laughing. <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing. Why people? I was just laughing. And the laugh was not laugh of pretense, it was laugh from it was real laugh from the heart. So when they quenched the, 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 the fire, the man, the man he said, My BP has rise because he is feeling where will I get money to buy this car? I said, Oh God, me will get car at the laugh. <laughs> you will not get car. You the, you are angry. It was that thing that came the man down. He said, oh God, I've never seen somebody who talk like this. I said, I said, my life does not consist on these things. Because I was even leaving that place to attend, to attend, we lost a woman in PFM last, was it last week? Last week, on Tuesday, she died. We went to her house with the school. We saw four cars and nobody is there. So, so I said, I'm even going, I said, I sent a message that we lost somebody. I'm going to attend somebody's school to pay a condolence visit. So, not in this life. But the message is that he was busy doing the work without knowing that the timing was not set. Ignorance is an enemy to your progress. Yeah. Hear me, sir? Ignorance is the reason why people are suffering demonic attack. Because some things you think are pushing you. If you know that in Christ it has been paid for, you probably become easy. Come on, say in Christ. I am delivered. So why, 
Why did Jesus say? Because you rejected the truth. Because you opposed the truth. The enemy will come upon you. And you will not leave any stone on top. And your children. He said, because you did not. Oh my God. So, knowledge of who you are in Christ is your defense from demonic attack. Come on, say, knowledge of whom I am in Christ. Come on, say, knowledge of whom I am in Christ is my defense from demonic attack. Hear me, if there's any man you should believe, hear me, there are some prayers you preach, they are not important. Hello. Come and see where I pray in my house. My, my bed, Bible is open. My table, Bible is open. I am, I am declaring scriptures to God. Hello. Some prayers in language are useless. Until when we bring the prayer down to what Christ has done for us. This is very important, sir. Any prayer you pray and you have the consciousness that there is something special you do outside Christ to be delivered, you are finished. What did I say? You are finished. But when you pray with the consciousness that Jesus is dead on the cross, has given you victory over sin, victory over death, victory over attack, I can assure you, you will consistently have victory over Satan. Come and say, I'm victorious. Come and say, I'm victorious. Come and say, I am victorious. So as I round up, why did Jesus say the enemy will come and attack them? Because of their opposition. Number two, their rejection. Number three, they are ignorant that he is the Messiah. Even today, can you imagine a Jewish priest? The man, he wants to convince the world that Christianity is fake. <laughs> that there is nothing like Jesus in the Bible. Can you imagine people that Jesus came from? Oh, but that is the most terrible ignorance that, sir, I pity the Jews. You know what? That if there is any people that should preach about Christ, it should be the Jews. But the Jews are the ones fighting against the gospel of truth. He said, I advise you, Christians, leave that Bible. Go and pick the original Bible of the Hebrew. And I asked my wife, what is this man trying to convince? Spiritual blindness made him to oppose the truth. Thank God you've heard today that in Christ you are victory. Did somebody get into that talk? I said, when the truth is revealed, is that what I said? And when you accept the truth and walk in the truth, you are creating a defense for tomorrow in case the enemy will attack you. So when the devil comes to me now and meet me praying in Christ, confessing in Christ, it will go back. But when it comes to you and discover that your prayer is not Christ-based, it's not Christocentric, you become a victim. But thank God, after today, you shall walk in victory. Amen. Come on, say, the enemy will no longer have an edge over me because I know the truth, I walk in the truth, I believe in the truth, and I have faith in the truth. Okay, as I ran down with somebody, the lesson is in two sections. Section number one is that when God is in need of you, what happened to you? He will ensure that you are set free from whatever is holding you. Number two lesson is when you act on God's word, you will see the outcome positively. Number three, when it is time to fulfill a prophetic agenda, God will cause things and people to cooperate. Hallelujah. And I said to you, that what men have not been using have cared, they will come to you. Oh, that man is too cool. Let me know of it. And the next, the next session is that, why would the enemy come against the Jews? Why did the enemy attack them? Because of their what? Number one, opposition. Number two, rejection. Number three, ignorance of the truth. He was the Messiah, and they were still waiting for the Messiah. And the Messiah has already come. So what did I say to you? That if you walk in the truth, which is Christ, your defense over Satan is guaranteed. 
Oh, come on. Somebody say, hear me. So, there's a prayer we are praying. There's a prayer, oh my God. There's some prayers that, that may go ahead the church. That prayer, because that prayer we even, <laughs> I will teach today in Bible school. Yeah, I will try to be very generous. Please don't make Satan occupy your prayer more. What did I say? Let's say you are praying for one hour. Don't spend 50 minutes calling demon's name. Satan, demon, Satan. Every witch in my father's village, every witch for 50 minutes. Use that minute and call Jesus. Am I teaching good? Come on, say, say, he said, by my faith in Christ, by my union you know with Christ, I enjoy the victory in Christ out of Satan. Hello? Are you hearing me? What did I say? By my, come on, say, by my union with Christ, by my identification, say it now. Come on, say, by my union with Christ, by my identification with Christ, I enjoy the victory. Christ had over Satan. Come on, say, by my union, by my identification with Christ, I enjoy the victory Jesus had over Satan through his death. Is that a good prayer? Is that a good prayer? Is that, that's how you pray. Hear me? Anybody who doesn't go with the teaching, I pity you. You know what? I've seen them face to face. I've said it. I've seen them face to face. 1992. I saw them all. Not, 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 not. What I mean, face to face, them all. How many of you have seen that you are standing and something is changing the human being in your presence? Have you seen that before? You know, have you seen it before? I've seen that. And walk for me. And in the name of Jesus, oh my God, the devil knows. That if the church stay with Christ, is defeated. Yeah. So we shall pray the prayer now. In case somebody is going through demonic attack, I will pray this prayer. There will be victory. Yeah. Oh, that man is too cool. Yeah. That amen is too cool. Yeah. Come and say, by my union, by my identification, by my faith in Christ, I share in that victory. Christ had over Satan. Through the cross, make it a prayer point. Make it a prayer point. By my, by my union with Christ, by my identification with Christ, which God pray. By my faith in Christ, I share in that victory. Come on, I share. I share that victory that Christ had over Satan by the cross. I share in it. That victory is mine. Who is not praying? Kalaboshka. That victory is mine. Come on. You are not praying. That victory is mine. I share in that victory. Come on. I share in that victory. I share in that victory. I share in that victory. Every day long about you know, but my you know with Christ, I share in that victory, Christ over Satan. Every attack on my head, on my finances, on my family, but my you know with Christ, but my identification with Christ, but my faith in Christ, I share in that victory. Come on. I share, I walk in that victory. Jesus had over Satan through the cross. Who is not praying? Eli Gabalado Shida Kadaba. But my you know with Christ. Come on, we give a praise. Eli Atos Kabandela Bodadu. Eh, she tell a creed that Gabo Shila Badabo. Eh, she a clay in the Brakadabo. Jeletobora di in the Lakababa. By my you know with Christ. Come on, pray, 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 declare. Bama. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think I've, I've said it here before. Praise the Lord. I've said it before, I said, when the devil showed up in your house, it, it happened to me several times, several times. If you have any demonic attack, leave Holy Ghost fire out. Hello? Holy Ghost fire cannot chase the enemy. Forget this thing that I teach you. What will chase the enemy is Christ. Just expose Christ to Satan. <laughs> Hello, I, I'm not teaching you. I've seen it one, two, three, four, several times. Yes, yeah, somebody can still be delivered from attack even when he prays strongly because of mercy. Yeah. That even, even though a Muslim man, if a Muslim man is attacked by Satan, if God wants to show him mercy, he can say something God will deliver him. Yes. That one is quite different. It's quite different from the red approach. I'm, I'm not really communicating now. 
when, when, when you have an attack in the night, or when you sense the, the presence of demonic activity, hear me, pray this this way. The victory Jesus had over Satan 2,000 years ago, I recall it, I enforce it, I appropriate it, I establish it by faith now. Mark my word. See, that demonic present will go forever. Hello? Remember the first time I preached, I, I did to testify, the first time I preached, that I don't feel overset by revelation. You remember that message? Many years, many, 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 many years ago, when I finished teaching that message, I made a statement. I said, I said, demons are called rulers of what? Darkness. Why do they rule? Because it's darkness. When they are brought to light, they are slaves. So it is the environment you create that determines the strength and performance of demons. When you create darkness, ignorance, they will rule. But if you create light, faith in Christ, they will be defeated. Oh my God. Oh my God. To hear this, when I finish teaching, look at it. I was teaching that morning. I said, anywhere Christ is taught, anywhere God's word is taught, Satan is incapacitated. Satan cannot perform where light is. Satan's strength is the absence of light. And light is God's word. And darkness is ignorance. And I said, when you walk by the revelation of God's word, though you are in the midst of demons, sir, they, they will become helpless. The helplessness of demons is on your faith in Christ. Oh my God. Come on, say the helplessness of Satan is huge on my faith in Christ. Come on, say the helplessness of witches is huge on my faith in Christ. But hear me, when I finished teaching that powerful message, I went to the house that afternoon. Somehow I slept. Exactly what I preached came. So demons gathered. And when demons gathered, they became helpless. Like I thought. God was confirming to me that day that what I thought is from him. They became helpless. And I woke up. I said, this is where the victory is. Your faith in Christ will render demons powerless and helpless. So can we pray the prayer again? Yet anybody going through demonic attack, anything that looks like Satan, as you pray this prayer, there will be absolute victory. Come and say, by my union with Christ, by my identification with Christ, by my faith in Christ, I recall, I appropriate, I establish the victory in hand of a Satan by the cross in my life. Pray, 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 pray. Jean de Kappa Kadeva. By my union with Christ, by my identification with Christ, every satanic manipulation, every satanic attack, by my faith in Christ, by my union, I recall the victory. Come on, pray. You are not praying, you are not praying. Oh, we give a praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Every satanic attack on your head, on your finances, on your children, your family, by our faith in Christ. Enjoy the victory. Enjoy the victory. You are victorious. So church, what do you do when demons show up in your heart? Come on, say, I recall the victory Jesus had over your master by the cross. I recall it now. I appropriate it now. I establish it now. Come on, shout hallelujah. I'm teaching you secrets to overcome demons. Have I taught you that? Have I taught you that? Why should you believe me and teach you? Because I have seen demons face to face. And how did I do? Simply in the name of Jesus. The next prayer point. It is time for you to fulfill a prophetic agenda. And I say, when it is time for you to what? Fulfill a prophetic agenda. You are like Joseph. 
you will be set free from whatever is holding you. He said, Lord, because I am connected to divine purpose, whatever is holding me stagnated, by my faith in Christ, I pray close for me. Wanna pray? Come on, pray, 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 pray. You're not praying. Lord, whatever, Lord, I am I am I am lift up to a divine task. I am lift up to a divine mandate. Whatever is holding me down, every resistance on my on my progress, every resistance on my progress financially, every resistance on my progress in my career, by my faith in Christ, I pray close. Come on. I pray close. Come on. I pray close. Wanna pray? You're not praying. You're not praying. Lord, every satanic resistance on my progress, I break loose because it's time to fulfill a prophetic agenda. Come on, pray. I'm set free from every chain. I'm set free from limitation. I'm set free from stagnation. I'm set free from limitation. I'm set free from fear. Whatever has held me bound, I am set free. Jesus, tell me, pray. Hear me, hear me. I speak, I speak as God's servant. The kind of progress you have never made before, you make it after now. He said, Lord, the kind of progress I've never made, exponential progress, geometric progress. Lord, because I've been loose by faith in Christ, I make unusual progress. Pray, 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 pray. You're not praying. Lord, I make unusual progress. I'm no more head bound. Hallelujah. I am no more head bound. I am no more head bound. I am free from every shackle. I am free from every challenge. Come on. I am no more head bound. I am free. In Jesus' name we pray. When Jesus Say Lazarus comfort. The Bible says Lazarus bounce out. You know why he bounced out? Because he was chained. Everywhere chained. And Jesus said, lose him and let it go. Some of you, you, you'll be loose from failure today. You are loose from hardship. You are loose from stagnation. You are loose from quickness. In the name of Jesus. Come and say, I'm free. Say, I am free. Come on, say, I am free. I like this prayer point. When it is time to fulfill a purpose, things will cooperate. Hear me? What it means is that anywhere you apply for a job, they will cooperate. <laughs> you didn't get it. The Bible says, go and on that, if they ask you, tell them the master. Even the owners cooperated. Why? Because that donkey was to fulfill a prophetic agenda. Lord, because this is my time to fulfill divine task. Let things and people cooperate with me. Wanna pray, 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 pray. Lord, let let organization cooperate with me. You're not praying. Let companies cooperate with me. Oh my God, let them give me what I ask. Let them give me the job I apply for. You're not praying. No, come on, pray. Lord, let let companies cooperate with me. Let the owners of company cooperate with me. Let the owners of 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 of, of enterprise cooperate with me. Hey, bakash koto bala talade, mezu bala kriza la tobolo, eji ando la kriza kada bandabu. Oh, we give a praise God. We give a glory. We give adoration. We bless to name God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give a praise, God. We give a praise. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who owns the donkey? Some people are right. Did they say no when they came to tight? Can I pray for you? Owners of organizations. Directors of ministries, ministers of ministries, they shall not say no to you anymore. As you go to untie your job through applying for it, I speak over you. Those that own the company, they shall say they, they will not say no to you anymore. They will say yes to you. Therefore, Somebody put application. I speak over you. Get the job. Receive the job now. Oh, diamond is to go. Go with cause men to favor you. Please.
give me the Bible, give me the Bible, cook, cook. Let's pray this prayer. Just to stand here. No, give me that one, give me that one. Some of you, you will guess, you will guess or cut off. Please apply for jobs. Are you hearing me now? Apply. The owners, they will not say no. Why? Because the master needs a job now. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, you think the master needs that job? Come on, say the master needs that job. Come on, say the master needs that job. Come on, say the master needs that job. The last prayer point. Come on, say the master. Hear me, hear me. You get job in the lucrative organization because the master needs that job because that job will play a critical role in the next phase of this ministry so the man oh my god the master come on see the master <laughs> come on see the master, the master. The master. we shall hear the symbols of jobs yeah. okay here this one to pray the last prayer point well praise the lord chapter 7 verse uh, 27 28 of uh, Esther. well praise the lord god of our ancestors who made the king want to beautify the temple of God in Jerusalem? And praise God for demonstrating such loving kindness to me by honoring me before the king and his council. Now, if you read it from NIV, he said, Praise the Lord who put this thing in the king's heart to beautify the temple of God in Jerusalem. God will put something in people's heart for your sake. God will cause men to show you affection. Finally, as a matter of emphasis, now that you, before that you don't know that the master needs the job, am I right? Now that you know the master needs the job, because that job will play a critical role in the next phase of this movement. Take the job. He said, Lord, Lord, come on, say, Lord, now that I know that you need that job, you need that money, Father. Put me in a position where I will get that job, where I will get that money for the sake of your work. One of pray, 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 Anybody here going through demonic attack is over. Why? Because by our dedication, we can.